Okay. It's counterintuitive. Uh, hello, thank you for, uh, for coming to this talk. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Andrew Malice. I'm uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Calamuda, which is an agency based in Oakland, California. We'll be getting that a little bit later. Uh, but first, I, I just wanted to share with you uh, why, why I'm here, why this, this problem matters, and, and sort of where, uh, where I'm coming from. Uh, way back in the day, oh, fantastic, great timing. There we go. Hmm. Uh, also, the subway is not running north-south right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I got here. So um, back in the day, if you wanted to share analytics data with stakeholders, uh, you could do, and you still can do this, this wonderful exporting of information from Google Analytics as a PDF. You can attach it to an email. You can send it to them. Uh, you're effectively delivering lag metrics because everything from uh, the point of delivery uh, to the present is absent from this report. Uh, you know, you send one of these reports, and then you, know, wait, you wait a month, you send another one, then you wait another month, you send another one. And then what, what is that, that person left doing when they want to get a bigger picture of how their website is behaving? They're sorting through emails and opening up multiple PDFs and comparing things. Seems kind of ridiculous, um, but this is what we did because, well, you know, the analytics UI is daunting and you, you don't really want to send someone there because, um, you know, you value their sanity. That Google keeps changing its user interface and its logo. It's it's really a, uh, it's great. Everything is in beta forever, um, and it's fantastic to be innovating. But for senior stakeholders and C-suite decision makers, uh, it's really important that there's you know stability in the information that they're um, that they're they're getting. Well, um, that that problem in in part uh, is solved with a new uh, product, relatively new product called uh, Google Data Studio that I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, but I don't want to make this completely you know, a pitch uh, for uh, Google. I'm also going to be speaking about some other dashboarding solutions. I'm going to speak more broadly as to why this problem is important and how we can address it and talk a little bit about the nature of analytics as well because um, you know, the application of a concept uh, is only as powerful as our understanding of that concept. Uh, I like to think of Data Studio as analytics meets PowerPoint. Uh, it allows you to take what normally you would uh, see in this interface, save all the navigation, and reorganize the reports into essentially like a slideshow. So you can take all of those same widgets, put just the ones you want onto a slide or a series of slides. And this presents a lot of advantages. Um, first you can report on multiple websites at the same time, which is more difficult to do in one analytics uh, view. Uh, so you could build a slide with um, reports on like three or four different websites. That's, that's kind of impossible to achieve otherwise. But mainly, uh, it becomes you know, a tool that's, that's really much more easy uh, to digest. Um, if you stick around till the end of this talk, I, I will be giving away something uh, for free to uh, all lucky members in this audience. Uh, I uh, introduced myself earlier, but I'd like to introduce Kalamuna to you if you don't know us already. Uh, we are a, a mission-driven uh, organization. We, we work with no nonprofits, uh, institutions, all kinds of innovative organizations to help make the world a better place and to drive their mission forward uh, through the use of technology, strategy, and design. Uh, we are based in Oakland, California. However, the majority of our team is distributed. Um, two of our company directors are here in Toronto, where I was born, which I still hold very dear to my heart, which is one reason why I very much want to encourage um, the growth of the Drupal community here and, and why, um, as an agency, we sponsor uh, this, um, this event. Also, we really enjoy sharing. Uh, knowledge is, is, should be free, and uh, it's, it's really, I think, appropriate to be having this event in a library. Uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I have fond memories of the reference library. Uh, it's really, I, I have a slight fear of heights. Um, 
uh, in that like I always want to jump off of tall things but never do. Uh, and and this, this library just kind of brings up a lot of those feelings in my, my belly. Um, <laughs> in, in less, uh, still, still quite interesting architectural uh, spaces like the United Nations or at the Bay Area Drupal Camp, uh, we, we give talks and uh, like, like this one. Uh, we also are really committed to uh, organizing events like this in our, uh, in our own right. Uh, and in activating the community, in uh, to celebrate the uh, the demise of Drupal Six, uh, we organized a New Orleans jazz style funeral uh, at DrupalCon a couple of years ago. Uh, that was complete with a, a ceremonial uh, casket uh, in which we consumed a, a Drupal shaped cu cupcakes. Uh, Dries gave a talk as well as uh, some others from uh, other Drupal luminaries from uh, around around the globe. And uh, it was a very emotional event uh, for many of us who'd worked on, on Drupal for many years, Drupal 6, for a lot of agencies and individuals signaled the professionalization of Drupal in a lot of ways and became um, you know, a platform that we, we had been supporting and, and working on for, for quite some time. So um, it, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really nice. Uh, we're also, uh, keen to find new ways and new paradigms to interact with our uh, constituents. And we ha recently have been transforming our booth presence at events uh, at TripleCon and BadCamp to um, promote other forms of interaction. Uh, instead of giving, uh, you know, putting a bunch of money into t-shirts or keychains and, and landfill, uh, we decided a few years ago we'd start giving our money away to, to charity instead. And actually not just any charity, but the charities that uh, individuals at the conference were interested in contributing to. Uh, and we did this for a couple of reasons. We wanted to, to help foster uh, communication and uh, storytelling and understand why uh, people were here. Because you know, we're, here at a, we're, we're ultimately here at a technical conference to learn about how to do things, but it's all at the service of a cause. And, and that's really, I think, important to remember and something that we want to bring you know, to the forefront of, of our uh, communication because it's it's really um, you know it's who we are and, and, and why we do things. So uh, individuals would decide you know I, I, I want to give to EFF or uh, to Creative Com Commons and they'd fill out a little square in the beginning uh, everything was just sort of grayscale and built up over time and created a, a testament and, and greater awareness within the community of all these different causes that people really cared about uh, and that was really interesting to see because it was like oh what's what do these guys do? And, and people would talk, we would talk with them, and uh, it, was really, it was really meaningful. We're always uh, seeking uh, meaning. Uh, we work with a number of uh, institutional partners in higher education, some of which are on this slide, a lot of nonprofits as well. Uh, uh, now, if you don't have uh, this particular color set in your logo, we'll still work with you. Uh, Zen Center is a testament to that. Um, I, I, I don't know why everyone's got the same, get some creativity going, like we, we gotta get, we do a little bit of logo design too. Uh, so uh, we're doing some work, we, did, we launched a really great site a couple weeks ago for um, the De Young Museum, if you wanna check that out, it's at uh, insights.famsf.org, I believe. Uh, it's for uh, La Prose. Uh, it's a beautiful website which is entirely built in Calistatic, which is a prototyping framework that we've, uh, developed and put together, my colleague Crispin spoke about earlier today. It will show you the full power of what you can realize in a purely static context. We're in the con in the process of building, a, figuring out a new backend that's going to power that. We're evaluating some options, and we know that we'll be able to consume uh, whatever it is because it feels like Drupal is a little bit, you know, too heavy for essentially what are very complex and beautiful, but all, but single page websites. Anyhow, we're here to talk about analytics. What is, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? Well, for us as an organization, we want to do meaningful work. We want to do good, right? And, uh, but how do we know, right? We like the product that we've made. We've made a beautiful website. The, the client is happy, like we're happy. Happiness is fantastic, but we're building a website for end users and they have particular sets of goals and objectives. We want to make sure that they're able to achieve them. We don't have the benefit of always getting them in the room, so we want to be able to measure 
those things. We want to be able to measure them so we can achieve greater and better outcomes and we can iterate towards those ends. And really, we want to make sure that we're measuring the right things because um, you know, our eye should be on the prize. Lastly, we want to visualize those outcomes so that we can tell a story and that that story can power action and inform decisions. Uh, I got particularly interested in the power of visualization a number of years ago when I, I went to New York for Occupy. I worked to help power some of the technology infrastructure behind the movement. We built a visualization of all the different occupations that were happening throughout the globe, um, including you know, some uh, other uh, like movements that weren't necessarily labeled Occupy. But we wanted to show the power uh, of an idea and how it could cross borders. And so we built a map that eliminated those borders and focused a lot more on the connections and on uh, the beacons of, of light that were shining through uh, throughout the globe. And I learned how powerful this visualization was and how this data uh, became for individuals in middle America who were alone in their small town with their ideas holding steadfast to uh, try to build a better world and how connected they felt to everything else that was going on around them um, because of this. Uh, the data was exportable as well and ended up powering some research uh, from UC Berkeley, uh, which was uh, really interesting to, to see. Sometimes you don't, you don't know how much reach the projects that you have, uh, that you work on have, um, so it was, it was kind of uh, delightful. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more broadly about analytics because uh, analytics aren't, aren't, isn't just, a, a, you know, they're not owned by Google. Analytics is a concept and it's a practice and it, it re really involves taking information, uh, measuring it, analyzing it, and, and interpreting it and presenting it back. So that in our case, for when we're talking about digital analytics in particular, we can use that information to inform user behavior, and we do that on all kinds of different applications. Some examples of analytics. This is a Google Analytics tool. It is an overlay. There's a Chrome plugin that you can get, uh, which is free, of course, like most Google things. Uh, and it will create an overlay on your website and show you where, your, where links are clicked. Um, it will, in the core of all the links on the page, which add up to 100%, they get divided across all the different links, and you can see which ones are more popular. Uh, in this case, we were doing some analysis on a university website. They were motivated to get people to donate. Uh, they had created these buttons, make a gift, that no one was clicking on um, because they were poorly designed. And this is a really powerful way of illustrating that. Um, in, in, a, in a rather you know, intuitive manner. So we've taken information, it's presented, and it's motivating some action to redesign a button or think about a new paradigm for donations, which probably shouldn't be jammed up in the text over there. Um, analytics uh, as well can mean, uh, you know, in this case, uh, tracking how users are interacting with the website. Um, this analysis looks at, uh, uses a tool called Hotjar, there's also Crazy Egg. These are uh, heat mapping tools, and there are three forms uh, that this takes. One on the right is a scroll map, it just shows how much time people spend on which part of the whole page. Some people don't scroll all the way to the bottom, it gets cooler. At the top, people spend more time, it's warmer. Now from that, people are clicking on things, they're thinking about clicking on things, their mouse is sort of moving and hovering, and that's meaningful too. It's not just about clicks. Intent is, is uh, uh, you know, what is it, three quarters of the law or something? So um, uh, we can see here that like very few people are clicking down on the social media icons that everyone wants in the footer of their website, right? Um, because they are always used. Um, and the navigation certainly popular, but you know you see um, there's a, like a lot of hovering. These they're going all the way down to the bottom. There's a lot of action in the footer, not many clicks. The top ones being clicked, the rest not so much. So people are really like looking for things. It, it, so you start to paint a picture of how your eye is really being interacted with. Um, in this case, for a client, we took some patient data that they had got that, all of that data normalized it, brought it into a spreadsheet and pushed that spreadsheet out to map, uh, did some reverse, so we had addresses 
We did some reverse uh, IP lookups based on those addresses. Uh, not reverse IP, reverse uh, geocoding. Got some uh, lat lawns and put that through a map uh, powered by Mapbox that created some density that let them visualize you know, where everyone was coming from. Although they were a uh, San Francisco based uh, institution, um, there were dots spread out all over the place and it really started to sh paint a picture uh, because, well, this was for a clinical practice uh, at, uh, at UCSF, and it, it really just showed that a lot of people hadn't changed their home address and still had their parents' address uh, in there. Um, and so suddenly it showed that their data was maybe not exactly you know, as expected, and, and that's, that's uh, part of the power of, of visualizing things. There are some surprises that you can find. Uh, in this case, uh, we took, we did surveys. You know, Google is not able to get you all the information you want. It's, it's, it's a very, has a very specific um, use case, and uh, so we did some surveys and we plotted that information across, uh, you know, a graph space, uh, asking individuals how often they visited the website to understand audiences. Uh, there are ways you can segment your audiences uh, in your website to get this kind of information out of analytics. Uh, either through opt-in or, or other other means, but but generally it's not information that's readily available to you. Uh, so what we found here was that there's uh, an inversely proportional relationship in terms of how much time, how often people visit the website if they're an undergrad to a faculty member, and this announces some opportunities again for audience segmentation and a, a greater awareness of when we're trying to disseminate information, like when. Uh, eyeballs, what kind of eyeballs will be hitting it at, at what time. And so doing this early on in, the, in a redesign process or process of reconsidering the website can be greatly informative and uh, strongly encourage um, any uh, practitioner to dive as deeply as time permits into analysis and, and research um, and uh, you know, so you can measure, measure twice and, and cut once. Um, Ultimately, we're looking to have a greater impact, and analytics is, is really uh, all about that. It's about helping you figure out what works and what doesn't so that um, you can make more informed uh, decisions. All right. any, uh, any questions or, or thoughts um, anyone wants to contribute before I dive a little bit more deeply into, into dashboards, which is the, sort of the meat of this, this talk? One quick question. What's the Chrome extension that you're showing? I think it's called uh, analytics. It's like a Google Analytics. If you just, I'll, I'll get that for you at the end. It's you install like you install a thing and then you it's just there, right? So I don't remember the name. Sorry. Um, okay. So Google Data Studio. What is Google Data Studio? First, uh, how many people have heard of Google Data Studio in this room? Okay, great. Um, how many people have actually used it? Oh, okay, about half of those that have heard about it. Uh, it's not that old, um, but it's, it's quite old, you know, in Unix time. Uh, it's in, in 2006, it became a public beta. And uh, I like analytics because it's really easy to share. It's as easy to share a report as it is any other Google um, document, uh, a spreadsheet, or a Google uh, a a presentation. Um, but it's also it also presents dynamic information. So within that report, it's not like a screenshot. It's not a, a, a GIF or a, a ping that's like fixed in time. You can interact with the data in the same way that you can interact with all of those charts in analytics by hovering on things, but also by filtering that data. In this case, this report allows you to go and filter the data to see the difference between, uh, you know, in voter sentiment for Trump uh, between uh, male and female voters. Now already, uh, this data is extremely biased in a, a binary uh, data set, so I, I, I wouldn't trust it, uh, you know, implicitly, but it does speak to the ability to uh, create some more dynamism in your reports. Uh, it also has some features that will allow you to customize those reports and design them. I think this is really powerful for not only agencies, but for institutions as well. To um, Once you start to color your graphs and, 
uh, add some of the fonts and colors that are more um, uh, that are on brand, it starts to speak a little bit more to your control and ownership of your own information, uh, and that's I think important from a political standpoint, uh, and also you know a sort of you know for morale. Uh, so you can you can put together a little something like this slide which I showed earlier. Uh, I'm gonna switch now. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit um, of what can be done. First, uh, I'm, I'm gonna flip over to this template that we put together. Uh, this is that free thing that I'll be sending a link out to in a slide that you can download. To give you a head start, we put together a, a basic template that has, uh, you know, it's a little generic. You want to make sure that you're putting reports together that are focused more on your key performance indicators. Uh, these are some of the like more uh, common uh, uh, data points that most websites are, in, are, are tracking. Um, so this is a multi-page report. You can see we're on the first page. This is an actual Google Data Studio report and uh, it's I can interact with the parts and customize them. Uh, if I go into the view mode, then you can see that the data is all interactive. Uh, there's also this handy little date filter, uh, which is fantastic. You're no longer needing to send reports every month or period, whatever periodic uh, uh, period you use. You can go in and at any point customize and tailor this report or any other uh, dimensions you wish to expose to your uh, stakeholders to narrow that information down and apply filters in the same way that you would inside of Google Analytics. Um, cool. So here is this uh, first page. Here's another page, uh, which we already saw in the presentation, so I'll skip that one. And you can get all these little charts. And um, I won't dive, you know, too too deep into how to like make all the little widgety bits. I, it, it's a, you know, it takes a little while to wrap your head around it, and I think the best way to do it, like, um, maybe is the way that I learned Drupal, is like you take it and then you you try to break it, you move things around, you copy things, you modify them. So um, I'm hoping that you'll take this template and use it as uh, maybe a, a playground for you. Um, but what I am interested in showing you is some of the other stuff that, that you can do with Data Studio um, that you can't do with straight up Google Analytics. Because you have access to all the you have access to all these widgets, but you can tie them to other data sources. So you're not only needing to feed Google Analytics into Data Studio, you can um, use it to uh, connect to other kinds of data sources. And people have built connectors, which I'll talk about in a minute. Here's one to Twitter. Uh, so this report takes all mentions of uh, Kalamuna that are on Twitter and uh, will come in and, and report report on them here. So if you tweet Kalamuna, it will show up in this report as we speak. Uh, there are ways that you can filter this data to be more meaningful to you uh, if you do so choose. So here, for example, like I am not that interested in anyone that's talking about uh, Kalamuna that isn't us, so I might apply a filter to this data, which will come up here. You can edit this. Uh, so here I can exclude anyone uh, who doesn't have the screen, whose screen name doesn't equal Kalamuna. So there's a little bit that you can do within, within analytics to customize your reports. And uh, this is pretty nifty. You can also normalize data. I think this is a pretty powerful feature. Sometimes your, your data sets are not so clean. I'll remove this filter here. There you go. Sometimes your data sets aren't so clean. With uh, Twitter, the information that you get uh, in regards to people's user location is just a text <laughs> string. And people might write whatever in there. And so you're not able to then cluster that information to understand who's tweeting about you from, from where necessarily, at least if you're using the raw data. So uh, you can take any fields from any data set and create a new field that then you, know, you can apply some, some programmatic uh, analysis to. 
It's a little hard to read. I'll flip over to my slide, which is bigger. So in this case, um, I wanted to say, well, anyone who's from San Francisco Bay Area or Stanford.ca or Stanford, California, sorry, or San Francisco, San Francisco CA, Sacramento, Berkeley, like everyone is then local. And uh, oops. so that, that will just give me a yep or a nope uh, and an additional, additional view uh, on things. You can also do some pretty cool stuff with other, other kinds of data sources like MySQL. So you can connect uh, Data Studio to by my modal, uh, to your Drupal database and then plot or, or get a little table of information here. In this case, I'm just looking at the node table. We get a list of the latest blog posts and the date. Uh, it's still early days for the MySQL connector. Like You can't really do joins, which, <laughs> which doesn't let you do a whole lot with the information. But they're getting there. There's an open issue for that, at which point you'll be able to report you know, a lot more on, on things. And the neat thing here is then you can uh, take this information that you're getting from your Drupal site and map that along with maybe some other information that you're getting from analytics or, or other sources. But uh, you know, you're not limited to, yes, sir? Fantastic question. Here is my next slide. There are other connectors um, that will allow you to plug into uh, analytic sources. So this is just one. The connector gallery launched on April 5th of this year. Uh, and one of those uh, sources is uh, the Google BigQuery. Um, they do have other search and source backends. There's uh, Postgres, they're supported. Uh, and I don't know specifically for uh, Elasticsearch, but um, that, I, that would be uh, something you could search the gallery for. Um, what I find particularly interesting and useful are uh, Google Sheets integration, uh, because with any, you can, even though they may not have connectors for every single system, you can generally export everything like as a CSV, and once you have that, then you can use that data to create some other uh, information, informational graphs, uh, such as this one. This is, um, so once you set up your spreadsheet like this, you, you want to use these paradigms of dimensions and metrics, which are analytics principles that are applied inside of Data Studio. Uh, and then you can select from that, once you connect your spreadsheets, you can select those dimensions and metrics to plot them. Here is one example of, uh, I think, a fairly successful example uh, of, a, of data that examines the wage gap uh, between ethnicities and, and gender. Uh, still too, uh, too far uh, between those two things. Um, but, but kind of, I think, certainly very nifty, uh, a nifty way of being able to like bring a lot of different information together from analytics and other sources in this this just connects uh, to a spreadsheet uh, and some, some research. Cool. Uh, any questions so far? Or more questions? Yeah. So the connectors are generally authored by third parties. Those third parties are like other vendors that are trying, I think, to get you a taste of what they can do more of for you if you pay them. Uh, the Twitter integration is fairly basic. It doesn't have all of the features that I would like to see. Uh, Facebook, um, it, there are Facebook ad connectors, uh, but it's you know the amount of integration with Facebook is uh, not as strong. I'll talk about some other um, tools that um, integrate a little bit better with those sources because they're more tightly bound. Um, and it's still, again, early days since in April that that gallery was launched. My sense is that Google approached a few different people and were like, hey, can you build some connectors to populate this gallery so it's not just us? And they were like, sure, no problem. And they, they, they made something happen. Um, there, all of these connect, the connectors are, everything is documented. There's an API. There's, you can build your own connectors if you want to for your data sources and decide whether or not you want to put them you know, inside of the community space. Uh, but it is it is as powerful you know uh, as you want it to be, to be for you. Uh, here's 
a quick link to the template that we have if you want to download it. Uh, just go to bit.ly slash gds dash dn18, that's Drupal North 18. Uh, that's a hyphen, not an m dash or an n dash for your other type of files. I'll put this slide up again later if you don't have time to grab it. Uh, I want to talk about some other options that are available to you. Uh, these are popular ones. Uh, there are others. Uh, Power BI is one that's uh, uh, more popular in the Microsoft communities. I'll show you an example of their types of dashboards. Tableau uh, as well. Uh, Databox I'll spend a little bit more time on. Um, I do happen to like their product and I think you can do quite a lot uh, with them uh, in the free tier. So uh, Databox, they have a template library. Uh, there are some templates available as well on Google Data Studio. N not a ton, but uh, they, they get, give you like a pretty good starting point. Here's, here's one example of uh, an analytics dashboard. And you can go in and customize the colors and the widgets and the data. And like, you can put different data sources in the same report the same way that you can with uh, Google Data Studio. Uh, but one thing that I think is really the killer feature for Databox is that it's responsive. The slide, slide approach that Google Data Studio expresses uh, are, give you a couple options. It's like 8.5 by 11 or 16.9, and they're not resizable. This is completely responsive, which means you can put on any screen size on your mobile device, or you can use uh, Databox has also got this feature that lets you build these sort of like rotating slideshows. So you can take a screen inside of uh, the room, you can put a slideshow up, and then it'll just kind of like cycle through things. It's powerful. Uh, it can connect to uh, sources like QuickBooks. And you can use that information to track like how, you're, how far along you are in your donation. Uh, and your donations, it can connect to your, your CRM, and you can track campaigns, you can build a sort of like little peace room scenario where everyone is getting like more motivated by, by data in a real time, uh, in a real time manner. I think that's, that's quite powerful. Um, you know, like maybe it's, okay, so say like it's like Friday, right? And you're, you're working on some campaign and you're like, oh man, we're, are we really gonna make our target? And, you know, we're st we still need to raise this much money, and then like you, you, you just like you leave at the end of the day, and you're like spending the whole weekend worrying about this, and then you come back on Monday morning, and it turns out that some anonymous donor gave like a fairly substantial uh, amount on like Friday at like 4 p.m. Right, and no one would have seen this because you're the person who checks your analytics and reports back to you is just like they were doing something else with this sort of report. Report, then like maybe the whole team could be inform more quickly, uh, leave the office, or you know, at, on a really high note, be really peppy for the whole weekend, come back like with a new form of energy. I think that's, that's powerful, right? Um, so, uh, segment, uh, I'll talk about later, sorry. Slide was residual. Uh, here's a Power BI dashboard. I haven't personally used the tool very much. I grabbed this off the internet. Uh, it looks very similar to the kinds of things that you can build in those other spaces. The pricing model is decent uh, at a small scale, so, and I've heard good things about it. So it's another option for you to explore. It has more power than Google Data Studio. But again, Google Data Studio is free, and if you're only looking to present your analytics in a different way, great. This lets you do a lot more um, connection, connection between different data sources as well. and. Uh, uh, so that you can correlate some of your information um, that you wouldn't get necessarily just straight out of one source. Uh, Tableau is also very, very popular. It's super popular with data scientists, with large, uh, um, uh, I think the disaster recovery community uses it substantially as well. And you can build a lot of fancy reports. There are many specialists out there for Tableau. The pricing model is it's more expensive. Uh, or I think they have like a nonprofit tier. Um, I haven't explored it substantially yet, um, but I have heard, I've talked to many people that have used it and they're very, they're very pleased with it. 
Uh, I wanted to also give a brief shout out to Segment, which is uh, an organization based in San Francisco. They they write some really good tech. Uh, one of their um, projects is called Metalsmith. It's a static site generator. We use it uh, to power Calistatic. Uh, but the core of Segment's model is um, that they're a, they're a connector. They're a single API for all of your different data sources. So instead of installing uh, Google Analytics on your website directly, you install Segment, and then you go into the Segment dashboard, and then you enable Google Analytics. It's similar to what you would use uh, with Google. Uh, uh, it's similar to Google Tag Manager, if anyone uses that. Or if you don't in your institution, I would highly recommend it. It's very flexible and allows you to go in and change parameters without pushing any code to your website. You just go and do that in a third-party interface. It allows marketers to have a lot more control. Um, but in this case, they have an API, like an analytics API, and those calls are more generic. And there is sort of a middleware where they'll broker that call back out to uh, the, the different endpoint and get that in, information in, in whatever terms that particular uh, product uses. So why is that interesting? Well, I think it's interesting because it gives you um, flexibility in how many of these integrations you can throw onto your website. Installing all of these scripts, installing like uh, a heat map tracking tool, like it can be expensive, right? You just want it on for a little, for a hot minute, no pun intended, and you push it out there, and but it stays on longer because it takes someone time to pull it back down again. Well, you can just go in and turn it on and back off again inside of that space. But you can also freely turn on like 12 other tools because it's really only making a single call via the API for this kind of information. And then you can evaluate those different uh, products. They've pushed a lot of those products to open up their uh, practices to have 30-day free demos. I don't know about you, but like I hear about some tool, I go to their website, and I can't figure out what the heck they do or how much it costs because they all want me to call a sales rep to schedule a demo. I can't schedule like 40 demos, like it just doesn't make sense. But I can go in, I can click like a bunch of boxes, I can see how they work. And because they're a middleware, they have that information and all those calls inside of a data warehouse, which means you can replay your data on different sources. So uh, if you want to switch out of Google Analytics, you know, your data is kind of held hostage by, by Google. You can export it, sure, but you know, like you can't really use it. I don't know if you've ever looked at an export of all of that information, it's insane. You've got like 7,000 files, it's like unusable. Um, but, uh, but now, like you can replay your history. So when you turn a service on, you're not starting from scratch and waiting for time, waiting over time for that data to roll in. It's just gonna replay all of that information. And that data that you have, that data that's warehouse, you can push it to a bucket or it, it's yours. Like they're not holding on to it. So you can use it and you can query it in new and exciting ways that other products may not have thought about. And that's particularly interesting if you're trying to correlate different data sources because within that warehouse, you can then take things like your Facebook data and you can take your analytics data and you can, you can write a query that's gonna cross both of those different data sources. Then you can take that and you can push it out to Tableau or another source uh, like Data Studio and create a report that you would never be able to get in any one of those tools. So I, I think it's a particularly interesting product and I think they have a very interesting philosophy. I encourage you to check it out. It's a little complex like to get into, but um, if you can't wrap your head around it, there's a lot of power that you can, um, that you can have with it. Uh, here again is the link to the dashboard if you want to download it. And see we're at 12. So that, is, that comes kind of to the, the end-ish of uh, my time here with you today on this side of the podium will be amongst you for the rest of the conference. And excited to see what everyone else is going to present on. Uh, we are hiring, uh, looking for developers uh, on the front and back end currently. If you are interested, uh, come chat with me. Uh, you can check us out on, online uh, beforehand. And here's my information. If you'd like to connect with me personally at any point, feel free. Um, or I'm also here, personally. Questions? Yes, sir. Is there any kind of API that they expose in order for you to push data to that they don't gather themselves? 
any API to push data to the dashboards. Well, um, the way that the dashboards work, they're polling information, and you can switch, uh, you can set a different data source. So that data source can be a spreadsheet, it can be a C it can be other sources that they don't control. Uh, certainly, you know, I don't know if that's. Well, let me give you an example. Yeah. Uh, we use a Elasticsearch as a service kind of uh -huh. and they provide us with analytics. They provide us with time series analytics, so we're able to catch a date uh, for a particular data set. Let's say for the past seven days, here are the top five search results. Will we be able to then push that data to the Google dashboard so that we may pick that data and drag it around and make it all nice and pretty? Uh, what format do they deliver that information to you in? CSV. Yeah, sure. You just drop that CSV and, like, uh, no problem. Yeah. So a CSV, if you put that into Google Drive, um, you know, you can, or you can use that, import that into a sheet and then connect it and, and you're, you know, Bob's your uncle. Other questions? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. So sometimes Google's products are a challenge for accessibility with the fancy Agreed. work. Yeah. Do you know with the studio what the state of, the, of its accessibility is? Uh, I haven't looked at it uh, specifically, but I would guess not good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, they're, it probably, you know, it looks good. Um, you can tap through a lot of things, but just given the complexity of the interface, uh, for editing, I would guess, uh, you know, really not that great. But analytics itself, uh, I mean, that's a very challenging problem to present that information in a manner that is uh, truly accessible. Um, any sort of mapping or graphing, um, I mean, that's a huge problem all over the, the internet for, for, for graphs uh, and a lot of these, these types of products. Yeah. I was interested if I'm providing it to a client primarily. Well, yeah. It should work with voiceover. Yeah. Because everything is interactive, so as it's in the browser. Right. But how meaningful that is, I'm not sure. You know, it'll tell you 36.2%, but does it give you the full context of where that number is coming from? And does it relate to all of the rest of the context of your report? And if you move the things around, like, does the voice uh, respect the DOM? Like, what's the, the ordering of the information? I, those are really good, good questions. Um, Other, anyone want to leave on a happy note? That was kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you have uh, fun with this report, uh, and uh, you know, feel, free to, feel free to reach out.